All right, what's up, people? Welcome to the party. It is Monday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, which means only one thing. It's time to play haiku. This week's episode, the next 50 minutes or so, we're going to be ripping through one of the newer ranges on Haiku Pro, a CTF platform designed to help you learn cybersecurity skills in a practical manner, test those skills. Haiku Pro 101 is a range that I was involved in developing with the explicit intention of making CTFs approachable, making CTFs accessible, making it so you don't have to feel intimidated. You don't have to feel like I'm not good enough to play these ranges. Like I, I need more skills. Like ranges are really fun ways to get practice and they don't need to be intimidating. You don't need to be elite zero day hacks or you know crash override acid burn kind of thing you can be jerry and you can knock out some ctf so we're gonna have a good time oh perfect carrie's got haiku pro on the other screen haiku pro 101 is a free range and i do air quotes i don't know why <laughs> i don't know why it, it's a free, it's just a free range it's it is free it's not kind of free it's free so what does that mean for uh, for us? That means if you'd like to follow along in your own instance of Haiku Pro, go for it. You can go to haikupro.com. You can get an account for free. You can play Haiku Pro 101 for free. You can listen to me on YouTube for free. All of these things are all for free. So we can have a good time. That's the plan. If you want to just sit back and chill and relax and just listen to some cool music, learn a little bit about CTFs and how, how they work, how you can use them. Um, I typically go off on tangents if you're new here. Uh, so it'll be a good time. I wanna say what's up to some folks in chat before we get into it. You guys can see chat is on screen as well. As well. Uh, Jim Wales, Ms. Jenny Housley, give her a, a toasty. Jenny Housley always bringing the heat. I typically, um, <laughs> I sometimes have challenges on these ranges. I am not a professional pen tester or red team engagement expert. I am um, just a dude who loves some cybersecurity and does some does some cyber stuff. So it's a community driven experience and Jenny's always there to hook it up. Want to say what's up to Farns, Janishi, Alicia, Jerry on the regular. Alicia, I hadn't seen you in the daily cyber threat briefings um, last couple days, but it might just be, I, uh, there's so many people I didn't, I didn't see you come through, but hope you're well, Alicia. Hey, Mr. Even Stranger. Got the UTM set up with Cali. Very nice. Caleb Kirkish is in the house. Squad member, Caleb. All right, guys. Let me know if, uh, as always, if the audio is good. I can't tell. Oh, boy. I see you, Marcus. <laughs> so some of the other live streams, if we could not follow along, are there vouchers to follow the replays for Haiku Pro? Um, I do not uh, think so, Ben Middleton. In one instance, there was a challenge and Haiku issued some ranges, but hopefully uh, we can founts genocide, founts genocide. Uh, ben Middleton, hopefully uh, you can follow along. Guys, hop into the Haiku Pro range. Let me, I'm gonna do this because uh, we had some challenges with load last time. Uh, Haiku Pro 101, once you get in, if you just type in 101, Right, 101. You'll see, you'll get this range. You can go ahead and fire it up. We'll wait. Good to see you, Gil. Founds genocide. Founts. Kevin Lucas, studying Cisco IT specialist. All right, get it, Kevin. Hey, thanks, Ben Howard, on the audio check. Very nice. My man, Justin Gold's in the house. Jen, I say. Yeah, Jen, I say. Jen, I say. All right, guys, hop into Haiku Pro or or just, you know, hang out with me. Your choice. But we're going to go ahead and do it. When you log into a CTF platform, guys. OK, so the, again, the whole point of what I'm trying to do here. Holy crap, Alicia. I'm really happy that your son-in-law is healthier and uh, doing better. Wow. Uh, best wishes on a speedy recovery. My goodness. Oh, thank you. I do not have mod chat up, but I, I do now. Thanks, Justin. Okay, guys. So let, let's break down some barriers. Um, and I'm curious in chat. Let me let me ask a question in chat. 
Have you ever wanted to do a, um... oh, this is interesting. Oh, we'll talk about this in a second. So in chat, have you been intimidated by doing CTFs or have you ever tried CTFs and got frustrated? I'm kind of curious, like what, what's your experience either as a student or as a professional with CTFs? I'm kind of, I'm just kind of getting a feel for the room here. Naked jello diving. Okay. I, maybe, I don't know if we have time, if we have time. Dan Callage. So Kerry never thought he could do CTF. So completely in uh, founts, Jen, I say, intimidated. Yeah, it can be. Going to a YouTube tutorial, that's a good call. Enjoyed the, vil the film you edited on the So You Want to Be a Sock Analyst. Yeah, you're going to love that, uh, Kyle. Played with Wissis, Wissis. Somebody emailed me and, and, and um, informed me that I was saying Wixis, Wixis wrong. And I forget, Wheezy's. I think it's Wheezy's. Uh, have you ever tried CTFs? I just wanted to get people's experiences with CTFs. Patrick Vance played Pico CTF. Here, let me do this. Uh, Patrick Vance played Pico. Some of these songs I'm going to skip. Like that one. Um, hi, Tanita. It's good to see you. Pico CTF quit immediately, wanted to switch careers. Oh, Patrick Vance. Holy crumb, my friend. You know what? I actually was doing Pico CTF. It was just a few weeks ago, but I read the terms. I couldn't, they didn't want me to, and I understand why, like um, streaming Pico CTF. Very nice, Tanita. I'm glad you enjoyed, or you didn't say you're enjoying the GRC course, but I'll assume you are. <laughs> Uh, I did a CTF through Cyber Boot Camp. It's a little intimidating until you get through the first few flags. That's right. Zero experience with CTFs. Robert Burke, you, my friend, are in luck. Hack the box is too complicated. Did try hack me. Way more approachable. Yeah, I could see that, Mags. Yeah, so Kyle tried it. It can be frustrating. Okay, so let's... I, I agree with you 100% because typically when you, when you look at a CTF, you just sit down and you're like, all right now what like there's no there's no kind of onboarding right so for this particular range and i'm going to come back to this youtube later okay because i i don't want to give you guys this youtube right now don't go to this youtube right now okay because it'll um you'll watch it and you know i want you to listen to me but i will we will do it later it's a youtube video i made it's an exclusive video I made that's not public, but you can access it through this link. Do not go right now, please. We can watch it later. All right? Kind of. All right, so Terry Moorhead, first time. Very cool. All right, guys. So if you're going to follow, go to haikupro.com. And we're going we're gonna to do this together. We're going to walk nice and easy through it. Jovan says zero experience. Uh, Tamika says, haven't tried one before, but interested. Okay. Don't eat to the link. <laughs> Loved it. Thanks, Patrick Phantom. I'm glad you enjoyed the course, man. Okay, so guys, here it is. If you're going to follow along, haikupro.com. Right? Haikupro.com. Actually, I could, I could just put it in chat. If you're going to follow along, okay? All right. So we're going to go in here. You're going to go to ranges. You're going to type 101. And you can see it comes right up. This is the one you want. So go ahead, click in it. You get a little bit of a description, some skills. I've already earned the badge. You won't have the badge there right now unless you've already completed this range. Go ahead and click play range. Caliph, first time with a CTF. You're going to love it. And guys, you can follow along for absolutely free. The range we're doing, everything's free. Free account, free range, free, 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 free. Please, if it's your first time doing a CTF, hop on this and, and do it with me. I think you're gonna enjoy it. All right, Greg Wilson's done a couple on stream, uh, excuse me, on Steam. Well, you're gonna find out, Greg, that um, the ranges in Haiku Pro are a little bit different than the one on Steam. Oh, hey, Leonardo. I hope you're well, man. It's been a minute. Now, this CTF, 
This CTF is going to be really what I would consider easy. Like in the pantheon of CTFs, this one's going to be easy. Now, I don't know why, but see how this uh, didn't load up with an IP address? If yours looks like that, that's a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this range. I'm going to hit play range again. Leonardo studying for OSCP. Have you already scheduled it, Leonardo? Have you have you scheduled it? Hey, Just Ben. No worries, man. We're just kind of kicking it. You want to get connected with people that haven't recently passed? Let me know. Oh, nice, Justin Gold. That's very cool. Who said they did some on stream? I would love to try those out too. Um, I think Greg Wilson said he tried them on Steam, but the Steam version of World of Haiku is not really like a CTF. The Steam version on Haiku is more like a, a learning system. Oh, boy. All right, so again, we didn't get a target IP. Something's, something's not right. Hold on one second. All right, I'm going to try to refresh this. All right, so I'm going to leave the range. I think we're dealing with some, uh, some, some challenges here. Your stream might be giving it the hug of death. Yeah, I know, Haircut Fish. I know. I love it. I mean, I kind of don't love it because it screws up the stream, but at the same time, I love it. We, we, <laughs> we're we like Bush League kill net here. Yeah. We'll see. Just You're going to have to, I guess, refresh the range or something. We'll figure it out together, guys. Two and a half months from now? Yeah. I'll tell you what, Leonardo. Just from, a pers from personal experience... And you do you, but from personal experience, I have to, uh, like, if I don't, like, I have to schedule it. Like, I schedule it, and then it happens. You know, it's so easy to, it's so easy to kick it down the, down the curb, you know? Like, oh, I need, I need another month, I need another week, oh, something came up, oh, I got sick. When it's scheduled, you know, it's, it's, it's relentless. Yeah, Sean Washington, I, I get, I know you're loading. I'm trying to fix it. I'm trying to load out too here. Let's see. I'm, I make a schedule on my calendar, make it like a university class. That's a great idea. That's a solid, solid practice. Yeah, Carrie, I'm, I'm, I'm refreshing too. They might, there might be, I don't know. There might be a problem. Yep. Yeah. All right. So the fact that we're not getting this IP right here is an issue. It's an issue. I wonder, I'm just going to try another range. See, I don't know which ranges are free because I have a paid plan. Um, let's see. Oh boy, let me see here. What are some other free ones? Is content management system gone wrong? Available? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, Jenny. Here. We'll spin it up and see what's happening. Allison Van Stone's got an embarrassing story. Not sure what I messed up, but I didn't even get connected correctly through VPNs to even get started. Oh, that is funny, Allison. But you know what? I'll tell you what. I did um, hack the box, and you have to connect to a VPN and hack the box, open VPN. Okay, so I was able to connect into content management system one 
Um, can you guys check if it's free? And uh, and and we can do this one together. This is not the one I intended to do, okay? Because this one is not going to. This one's not. CMS two is free. Okay, let's back out. Everybody, everybody to CMS two. <laughs> Everybody to CMS too. Yeah, so Allison Van Stone, I've stood up a um, a VP like try to VPN because with Hack the Box, like there was like two VPNs and I was using the wrong one and connecting into the wrong environment. So, you know what it is, guys? Like, tell me if you feel this way, right? Like for me, doing CTFs now that I've done a bunch of them and I'm very comfortable with them, it's no big deal. But the closest analogy I can have to like starting to do CTFs. And I feel like this is going to resonate with a lot of people is like the first time you go to the gym, like a, like a new gym. And you're just like, like, you don't know where the, any of the machines are in, that you want. And maybe in, you like, you're kind of getting, maybe you're new to working out, like not going to a gym for the first time, like in a new city, but like, oh, I'm going to get healthy. I'm going to get strong. I'm going to start going to the gym. And like, you show up to the gym and you just kind of look like look intimidated like people are just walking around like directly to the machine they want and busting out like chest presses and then they like wipe themselves down and go to the bubbler and get some water and then they like immediately go to the leg press and you're still wandering around trying to figure out how to like put the pin to like lower the weight on how much the uh, lat pull down is and you're just like ah, to hell uh, like at, with this bump all this i don't feel comfortable i'm leaving now all right, so are we doing CMS one or two? Oh my God, CMS CMS one is free. Okay, so everybody, <laughs> back to CMS one. I'm sorry, I got fed some bad information. All right, so we're gonna do CMS one together. I don't even know what this range is. You can see I don't even have the badge, so uh, we're we're gonna figure it out together, guys. Here we go. How many people we got live? 75. Holla. Holla, 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 holla. <laughs> All right, guys. Go to CMS1. We're going to do this together. It's a good one. Thanks, Jenny. All right, guys. Here we go. So this is a, a capture the flag is essentially like typically like one machine, right? And it's got some hidden files on it or some machinations that you need to iterate through in order to discover and the, the goals, the flags. That's why they call it capture the flag. There's multiple flags throughout. And what can be intimidating is you sit down and now you're like at a Cali box and you're like, um, now what? Right? But you got to think about it from an architectural perspective, right? A lot of times you're sitting at a box or you're going to use a VPN and connect your own box in and you're going to be attacking a target system, a victim machine, a uh, intentionally vulnerable asset, okay? And that's what this target IP is here. So if you see this on your screen, you should have an IP address that's different than mine, but an IP address. That is our target IP. So we're sitting on a Cali box. You can see that. You can go ahead and pop open a, a terminal by hitting this uh, black box up here. Just to show you, it's a full Cali instance, right? So we've got our box. We got our, our toolbox. Like, it's almost like this, like the Haiku instance, this portal right here is the boat. All these Cali tools are our fishing tackle box. And this target IP is a fish. It's a fish. And we're, we're looking to like, you know, fish it, okay? So we go up into the story here and there's like a little bit of a, you know, fictional story. We defaced a, a Silk Road website, not to be confused with the Ross Ulbrich Silk Road, even though that's exactly what it is. The hacktivist discovered a CMS webpage under development, which is not uncommon. Something's not right. It appears the CMS was intended as a backup for the Silk Road vulnerable tech. So this is just like a little fun story to make it a little bit more interesting. No big deal. Anyone else currently unreachable? Yeah, so this particular version, like so with, with Haiku, 
you don't need to connect to a VPN. They've put the Kali instance in the browser, and that's 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 one of the things you know they're trying to trying to reduce the level of uh, friction to get into using the platform. You, uh, this is different than the game on Steam, Ahmed. The game on Steam is World of Haiku. This is Haiku Pro. All right. So Sean Washington's in. Yeah, exactly. Aspect CyberSec. I'm currently using Chrome. You're good to go, buddy. The remote desktop server is currently unreachable. I'm not sure, Patrick Vance. Maybe refresh the screen. It should definitely look like mine. You should definitely have this Haiku Pro Cali desktop. You should definitely have a target IP address here. Uh, like, I, I can't, I'm not familiar with that error, uh, Patrick Vance. So, I'm using Google Chrome for what it's worth. Now, if you want, uh, with CTFs, a lot of them will have hints here. And usually CTFs, like if you get the range, you get a goal. Um, you have a po Apache guacamole login screen. That's weird. So they use guacamole to be able to copy and paste through the VM from the host machine to the... Kalith. Yeah, do you see a target IP? I literally just was doing um, slides for Cyber uh, 101, and uh, I had a Rolls Elbrick um, Silk Road. Okay, so if you get this error, the guacamole server is currently not reachable. Please check your network and try again. Just click reconnect. That's it, okay? You'll be fine. If you get that error, just click reconnect. So let's check it out. The first thing it says is perform network enumeration on the target machine and find the ports and an open attack vector. What port is open? So this is the flag. A CTF asks you questions and you have to interact with the system to get the answer. A flag is just an answer, right? Whether it's a, a, a file name, uh, a listening port, whatever it is, it's just a question and an answer. So we're gonna go to our Kali desktop. So make sure you're here. Pop open a terminal by clicking on this black box in, in the um, right here, right? So click on this thing and you'll get this big black box right here. And once you're in it, type nmap, N-M-A-P, and then your target IP address. Not mine, yours. You're gonna have a different one, okay? This is the command we're, whoops. This is the command we're looking to do, okay? Jim Wales is out of here. Take it easy, Jim. All right. All right, so at this point, we're gonna grab our first flag, everybody. All right, hold on, Ben Howard. So I'm just gonna do nmap, and you could see that it returned listening port 80 right there, okay? All we did was nmap and the IP address, okay? Nmap is a very ubiquitous, well-known, well-established, very well-supported network reconnaissance tool. It is excellent. You should absolutely know, know Nmap, okay? Now you see Ben Howard in chat put dash P dash. When you do Nmap, and an IP address. Nmap only scans the first 1,000 commonly used ports, okay? So, but there's 65,000 and change number of possible ports. And you can have a port listening on any service. Now, Jerry, what's a port? Well, I don't get it. Is this like where ships go in? No. In networking, your computer you're playing Haiku on right now, my computer I'm streaming on, my phone, right? All of the devices, your router in your house, they all have IP addresses. That's layer four, IPv4, layer four, um, or layer three, excuse me, layer three. So that's the network layer. Right above it is the transport layer, layer four. And this is where ports come in. You can have one IP address, one computer, one server, one laptop running a file server, a web server, 
um, a, a, a DHCP server, DNS server, right? You can run all these services on one machine. And in order for other computers to interact with that service, they need to connect. But in order to know what service they want to connect to, they go over certain ports. Ports are basically what allow kind of applications to be like, I'm right here. I'm on port 23 if you want to connect to me. And everybody understands because of the protocols, what port those are. Well, you can do up to 65,000 different ports, roughly. So by doing the dash P dash, you tell Nmap to run, instead of just the first thousand, all 65,000, right? And it takes longer, but that's okay if you have the time. And you could see now that we ran exhaustively across all possible ports, there's still only one listening port, port 80. Yes, exactly, Carrie, you know what's up. So now that your Nmap scan is complete, Nmap will return results like this. Port, state, service. We're listening on port 80 is a web server. This is the default standard for insecure web traffic. Exactly, so you can speed it up. Leonardo points out you can do um, dash T, capital T, and then one through five. And five is the fastest. Most people do four because five sometimes goes too fast, right? So now let's do T4, and you can see it, 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 it finishes quicker, okay? Now, if you want, you can even get a little sillier and do dash A. Dash A is going to give us more information. Now, we only have one listening port, right? But when we do dash A, it's going to interrogate it a lot more and try to give us more information, more telemetry. I'm going to click reconnect on this guacamole thing. Pause for dramatic effect. All right. See how it took longer, but it came back with way more information. Now we know it's not just port 80 web server. We know it's running Apache 2438. We know, uh, well, there's no session ID for the PHP, but we do know that it's running PHP, right? We know it's running right CMS. You could start using this information for further reconnaissance. Go to exploit DB, a search blade. See if there's vulnerabilities for these systems, okay? But the, the, the flag, don't get distracted, guys. What port is open? Well, we just looked at it. It's port 80. You just got your first flag. If you were new here, if you were doing your first CTF, go ahead and type 80 into the submit uh, flag button and hit submit and feel that awesomeness wash over you. You just got your first flag in a CTF. If this is if you're if your first CTF in it right now, boom. All right. But with CTFs, there's typically several flags and you get points for each of them. And that's how you have a leaderboard or a scoreboard is because the flags have points. So the next challenge we're gonna do is gather information about the service running on the Discover port and find a public vulnerability for the application using SearchBlade. This is literally what I just said you could do. Like I didn't know this was gonna happen, but I mean, there we go. From SearchBlade, what's the remote code execution exploit number? This can be found in the SearchBlade uh, results, PHP, web apps, whatever. Okay. So let me show you something, guys. Oh yeah, Justin Gold. <laughs> I end mapped on port 80. I am I am the matrix. <laughs> oh man. All right. Hey Laura Flores, good to see ya. Wow. Okay, so check it out. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys something. If you go to exploit DB. Okay, exploit DB. Now I'll put a, I'll put a link in chat for my YouTube people. Okay, if you go to exploit DB, this is a web site that is a database of known cyber uh, vulnerabilities and exploits, right? So write CMS, for example, we got a bunch of those. Um, we also have Apache. Uh, what was it? Apache 2438, right? So we can go up here and say Apache 2438, two, okay? And uh, it doesn't look, yeah, there's one entry here, one entry. Okay, so you can use this site, but guys, we're elite hacksaws. We're living in the command line. We're digital, we're, we're keyboard cowboys to take it back to the information superhighway. 
So we're going to use Search Exploit, which is a local to Cali um, application. You can you can get it by typing in Search Exploit, and it's literally a command line interface to the same database as Exploit DB. So you, you're getting even more technical. You don't need websites and GUIs to click around. You can do it from Search Exploit inside the Cali instance because really you. You, if you're going to be doing offset, uh, offensive security pen testing type stuff, um, you're going to be living in the command line. Like, yeah, you might be using burp suite and stuff to attack um, websites and whatnot. But, like, being comfortable on the command line, and I don't just mean Cali, but, like, just the, you'll you'll do a lot on the command line, okay? So let's do search exploit. And uh, it says gather information about the service running on the discovered port. Now, I think... The service is the right CMS service, not not the uh, Apache, I think. So we're gonna look for uh, right CMS um, and see what we can find here. So you can just type in, you can just type in search exploit, uh, right CMS, write it just the way it looks, 3.0, and hit enter. No results. Okay, how about? Search exploit right CMS. Okay, so you can see I just did search exploit right CMS and it came up with several options. Now, this is definitely the version of right CMS, so it matters. So let's see what version we were running. Right CMS uh, 3.0. So. I believe it wants us to find what is the remote code execution exploit number. And you can see here, it's given us a hint, PHP web apps. Here's another thing about CTFs guys, just so you guys know, since we're learning about CTFs right now, another thing about CTFs is they'll typically give you like some indication as to what it's looking for. So this looks like it's going to be a, a five, five character entry. And you can see it's going to be in the PHP web apps. Um, directory and you can see here PHP web apps directory and it's dot txt so it's one of these five one of these five entries and it says it wants a remote code execution exploit right so we've got this is remote code execution but it's a Python so that doesn't count and this is RCE and it's dot txt so that seems pretty good Okay, so Greg Wilson, this is where you got stuck. Did you get this flag? I hope you got this flag. Oh, you guys can't really see that, can you? See how it's RCE and then it's PHP Web Apps 50616? So that's going to be the answer, okay? 50616. The flag is five characters. It's in this PHP Web Apps. We use search exploit to find RCE. Very nice, Founts, Jen, I say. Okay, I know, I it, it is the bottom one. I just wanted to make sure everybody was staying up to, t up to date here. All right, here we go. Go ahead and submit. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. All right, let's go on to the next one. The publicly available exploit from search exploits tells us the admin panel is vulnerable to remote code execution. But how do we find the an admin panel? Using directory brute force tools like Derb or Durbuster will give us an idea of what directories are present. Find the admin panel, then try logging in with some sample creds. We should always test with. Okay. So first of all, I'm gonna pop open a Firefox. Okay, you don't you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm gonna type in the target IP address. Now remember, we saw a web server listening on port 80. So this is this is the website that is listening on this machine, right? It's right CMS, it's a website. Now you could click around, right? Products, you see you see how it says slash products? See how it'll say slash news, I bet? See a slash news, right? Come on, man. Slash news. So these are all the parts of the website that you can get to as an end user through the front end. But a lot of times, what's going on here? A lot of times um, developers will add stuff or forget to remove stuff, but there's nothing. 
What the hell? Excuse me. There's like an invisible barrier. I can't move my mouse to the right of this. What is going on right now? All right, so I'm dealing with uh, a limited capacity because I can't, I can't move out of the... Hold on one second. I can move out of here. There we go. Oh, geez, that was weird. All right, so let's go ahead and see what's up. Now, it says use directory brute forcing tools like Derb or Derbuster. So we're going to use Derb. So go back to your... Um, he, he, so here's something with CTFs you've got to follow the, the directions right so like all I wanted was that exploit it doesn't say go pop it right now it just says go uh, find this in search plate now it's saying use Durbuster to hide, fit, hide find hidden stuff so let's use Derb and then HTTP no S because it's port 80 and not secure 143 all right so we're going to use Durbuster and we're going to look for uh, hidden directory resources. Now, d hidden directory resources, Durbuster is just a brute force tool that's going to iterate over a list and see if it can pull back um, results. Okay, 200 result, uh, status code 200. So just hit Derb, and you can see here it goes. It's, it's, it's iterating over. Yep, you can you can copy the exploit code. I don't even know if it wants us to do that. This is us. We're hacking. We're hacking the matrix right now. Love it, Carrie. Keep going, buddy. You're doing good. So normally, what I like to do, I'm going to show you guys a trick. Uh, derb to remove uh, to only show 200. So I don't like, um, I'll show you what I don't like in a second. Um, there's definitely a way to like push or, or filter out. So only you only get the two hundreds. All right, does anyone, does anybody know, like there is a way to show only the 200 status code. 200 means that it returns something successfully. I don't know, I'll, I'll look for it in chat. This thing's still grinding. I got black hoodie on, rocking it, rocking it. Very nice. Dash MC. So do you do dash MC 200, Marcus? See, this is the cool thing. You could leave this up on your screen while working on other stuff and anybody that walks by is like, oh boy, look at this. Look at this. Elite Hacksaw MC 200, very cool. Well, I don't know if you need a hoodie in Texas. Although you guys did have like the ice apocalypse last year, two years ago, that was something. Geez, Derb really uh, grinds on this thing. Chocobobo. Yeah, exactly. This is like uh, classic network admin stuff, right? Like you just run this on the side and anyone who walks by is like, oh, wow, really burning the midnight oil, Costanza. And you're like, oh, meanwhile, like you're playing <laughs> like watching Netflix or something or playing Fortnite. Got the electrician coming over at 5.30. Can't wait for that. Bro, bro, chop. All right, so this is this is taking a while, man. We're going to have to really look through this. Find the admin panel. Okay, so what we're trying to do is find a, a resource that isn't necessarily... Um, it's not going to have something click through on the front end, but we want to see it. Uh, we'll be able to just type it in explicitly, okay? This says, hold on, I'm gonna guess now. This says admin PHP. You guys should have got this as like your third entry. We can, because this is a brute force app, 
like we can check stuff while it's it's iterating, right? So let's go back to our um, our web thing here and type in admin.php. That looks good. <laughs> that looks good. So this thing's still iterating, right? And I think if you were like a really, if you were a professional, Leonardo, you you could uh, chime in on this or Ms. Jenny Housley. Um, mo I feel like like export uh, outputting it to the screen is like kind of like amateur hour. Like normally you would output this to some file and then you know have have a nice clean easy way to look at it, um, not scrolling through the terminal shell. You'd have um, you'd have. It is admin PHP, Carrie. So go ahead and open a web browser, y'all. Put in your target IP. Add admin PHP, which we just found with Derb. And we're gonna get we're gonna get spicy up in here. Yeah, exact thank you, Marcus. I figured saving the files was was better, but you know what it's not good for? It's not good for um It's not good for live streams. I gotta are, you know, are you not entertained? I'm an entertainer up here and an educator. All right, so we've got admin PHP. Now it says in the, again, guys, if you're doing CTFs, you got to pay attention to what it's actually asking you, okay? It says, try logging in using some simple creds we should always test with. What's the username and password given us by the admin panel? Now you could even cheat a little bit because it's one, two, three, four, five, five letters or characters and then five characters. So you know it's not password, password. It's not, um, well, it could be admin, admin. So check this out. Common password list. Common username password list. Let me do that. I mean, you absolutely should know in 2023 that there are tons of crappy passwords, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. But the thing is, it's gotta be more like, um, here, sec list passwords is really, really good. So these are all just passwords. So you'd have to know the username. I'm gonna go ahead and go on a limb here. Like guess, guess, admin, admin is pretty common. Yeah, exactly. So let's try, let's try admin, admin. Actually, we gotta try to log into the box first, right? Guest, guest would be another one. Admin, no password. Did that work? Oh, we okay. All right, there it is, everybody. So we get, we did it. It's admin, admin. Basically, just guessed it. Essentially, this right CMS system uh, was just dumped um, onto the network and not properly configured in any way. So, Greg Wilson, I hope, I hope you're still with us. Fraud dog, what's up, man? Good to see you. Exactly. Yeah, Brian Waterbury knows what's up. All right. So, admin, admin, guys. Put it into the, t uh, the the box at the top. Is Allison Van Stone still here? Is she following along? Nailed it. Good job, everybody. Good job, everybody. We are on goal one, two, three, four. We're on the web shell. Okay. Upload a PHP web shell on the server based on the steps from public exploit and find that flag. What's the flag? Okay. Now it's going to get a little tricky, okay? You upload a PHP web shell on the server based on the steps from the public exploit. So let's do this. Going back to search exploit, we know it's this one right here. So go ahead and type search exploit in Kali uh, command line dash M and then five zero six one six. All right. What this is saying is, Hey, search exploit, download a local copy. The M stands for mirror of exploit five zero six one six. You never want to edit the exploit inside the database. You want to download it. Okay. So now if you type LS on the command line, you'll see that we have it right here. Okay. This is our localized, uh, exploit. Now let's go ahead and do a uh, Cat five zero six one six. I, I just want I, we got to see what it is, right? Um, because I've never used this before. Oh, and look how convenient it gives us a uh, step by steps. Okay, so login is admin. We've done that. All right. 
First time we did it, guys. So let's. Everybody should have. Um, everybody should run searchblade M 50616 from the Cali box. Get a local copy of um, 50616.txt. And then now we're going to look at the. Um, we're going to read the directions together because I've never seen this before. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. And uh, shout out to. Faisal Fazox, um, the exploit author. All right. All right. So there's multiple methods to bypass the current file upload protection. We're okay. So log in as admin. Choose a directory to upload PHP file, either media or files directory. Click upload file. Browse. Upload PHP file with extension of PHP like webshell.php to bypass HD access. The webshell PHP is available at this uh, URL. If you choose media directory, I'll switch directory files. So I'm I'm confused though. Like, are, are we supposed to rename this text file PHP? I do not have a file, a video on CYSA, honestly. All right, so what's Greg doing? Stuck on this one, he tries replacing files over and over, but couldn't get the payload to execute and get a remote shell. Make a new one. Okay, hold on. So I'm gonna use a hint, okay? Up in the corner, there are hints, Greg, or and everybody else. Like, I'm not exactly sure So I'm going to do it. I know Leonardo is saying I got to find a PHP shell, but let me look. Research simple PHP web upload shells. All right, that's that's a good hint. Simple PHP upload shells. Okay. First one on the list, pen test hint slash blob. This looks like a PHP web shell. I'm feeling pretty good about that. So let's go back to Haiku really quickly and see if we can't find that media directory. Um, let's see, file manager. We're in the media directory. Can I find upload? Oh, upload file. Okay, cool. So let's go back to, go back here. So I Google, listen guys, this one's getting a little complicated, okay? I Googled simple PHP upload shells, all right? So Google that. The very first one is pen test hint simple PHP upload web shell at master. Yeah, <laughs> thanks Jojo. All right, hey, well, Greg Wilson, let's just do this together. Let's just do this together. Simple PHP web shells, Google it, go to the first one. Pen test hint, simple PHP web shell. Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy. I'm gonna go to Haiku. Now I'm gonna do control alt shift to get this clipboard up. I'm gonna paste into it, as you can see. My PHP web shell is in the clipboard, and I will explain this again if people are, if I'm going too fast, okay? And then I'm gonna get out of here. I'm going to call it, I'm gonna do um, nano web shell dot PHP. I'm gonna paste in here. I'm gonna hit control X, Y, enter. And I know I just did a lot and I will help people through it. But now you can see I've got a web shell file there. So I Googled PHP web shells. I used the first one, pen test hints, simple PHP upload. I copied and pasted the shell itself. I went back to Haiku. I hit control alt shift on my keyboard and got this clipboard thing. And I pasted, I pasted in there. I hit control alt shift again. And then I did nano web shell. And I pasted in here, right? I'm even gonna put simply cyber just for fun. Okay, just to show you. All right, and now I got my web shell. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload the web shell to the, um,
It's in the root directory. There's my web shell. Okay. And let's upload the file. Oh, thanks, Leonardo. All right, so now we've got our web shell. If you ever see this on a web server you're controlling, you, you got problems. <laughs> you got problems. All right, so now we've got a web shell on there. Let's go back to the... Um, let's go back to this, because now I realize this is just telling us what the problem is. So we if we go to... Uh, Hold on, let's do this. Hold on one second. How do I? I'm gonna paste it. Okay. I did call it web shell uh, dot php, so that'll work. And then I'm gonna change localhost to ten dot 161 dot 91 dot 143 which is my target ip you'll have a different one in web shell php uh submit command um and i'll do ls that did not work uh you type you just from the command line carry you type nano Nano space web shell dot PHP. All right, Leonardo. What's wrong with my uh, web shell here? Check. What do you mean check my web shell? How do I check it? How do I check my web shell? By the way, I think the it's not version 3.1. I think it's version 3.0. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Greg. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, you don't think the parameters CMD? Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay, hold on. So let's see. Let's see. So, so I'm not really sure how to read this. Um, Oh, this is probably a crap web shell. Right? Maybe this is a bad web shell? All right, Leonardo, let's use yours, okay? Sorry, everybody, I'm pivoting. But I like cleaner and faster. Uh, let me do this. I'm going to do remove web shell dot php and then i'm gonna do nano web shell php get a brand new one i'm gonna paste leonardo's code wait messed up i have to do the control alt delete there's the simple command paste that all right there we go I'm gonna go back and upload this thing. File manager. I know Jojo, but I didn't, I, I the, the range has eight minutes left in it. So I just wanna, I do wanna complete it. So if people go back and look at it, um, they can they can see it. Overwrite file with the same name, absolutely all day. All right. All right, so we got this. So now let's see if we can't get that. I do learn a lot, guys. I'm telling you what, I'm not a professional uh, pen tester and reverse shells and web shells and search exploit and all this other stuff. Like, definitely learned it through... Um, through 
World of Haiku. I mean, excuse me, Haiku Pro. Can't wait. They're, I can't wait until this one combined thing so it's easier to say. It's starting to get hot in here. Ready? Here we go. That did not work. That did not work either. All right, hold on. Let's check it out. That would be classic me. So that didn't work. It says I, I'm having permissions. You don't need the right directory? What do you mean right directory? Oh, the CMS, right? I see what you're saying. So let me do this. Okay, so let me do this. Ten dot one six one dot ninety one dot one forty three. And then web shell PHP. It's written just like that. Web shell PHP, web shell PHD command ID. No permissions to access those resources. So maybe I have to upload it to a different space. Right? This guy said it might have to upload it somewhere else, right? It does say, uh, actually, you do have to upload it with a capital H PHP, capital PHP. Okay. So I've, um, that's interesting. Oh my God, bro, bro. All right. Let me do this. Cat web shell PHP. Now, can we uh, cat that and then push it into web shell dot PHP? All right. I know I'm, I'm going a little faster now, and it's because I the having the capital H is the important part. It's how you get around the access. This is such a silly. This is such a ridiculous, silly bug, too. Wow. There it is. Let's open this up. All right, now we've got this baby open. So now... Let's do this. 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 All right. All right. So now we've got the PHP correct. We've got the media. We get rid of the right CMS because we don't need that. And we need the target IP address. 10.161.91.143 slash All right, well, that's better than nothing. What the crumb? Like, what are we doing here? What? I feel like I made progress then, then didn't make progress. Yeah, exactly, Patrick Vance. It may, it may be. We might have to reevaluate the level of difficulty. So let's go back to the instructions because I'm moving recklessly. Um, web shell is available at this. If you choose media directory to switch files. Okay. Let me go ahead and click that. Um, refresh this. There's the PHP one. Let's go ahead and do that. So I don't know why it's not uh, executing. Try deleting HD access. Can we do that? All right, we just did that. No big deal. Nope. That is not working for us, y'all. I'll try one more time.
What's the problem, Uno? Oh, it's working, but not outputting the results? Well, that doesn't do us very good. That doesn't do us very good at all. Can we can we catch something? Can we catch a reverse shell then? Jenny, I did. I did delete it. HD access is gone. I'll get rid of this web shell too. Yeah, the argument is named CMD. You can see here. See? Hold on. We're getting a new... All right, Leonardo's written us a little updated web shell. So let's do that. We'll give it a shot. We're almost out of time. One minute left, 90 seconds left. Come on, buddy. We gotta do this. I don't know what the heck is happening here. <laughs> so I guess, I don't know what's going on. That's not working though. It's turning into a download. All right, looks like we were uh, unable to knock this one out. Here, let's delete web access on this one too, I guess. Yeah, so the Echo though, it looks like it's turning it into a download, you know? We can just download, delete this. 16 seconds. All right. Yeah, see, it's all, it's all, it's all just continuously the, um, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> all right. So the thing is, we could spin this range up again, um, and, and like get through those first four flags much faster, but. This has been a really good experience, guys. So we played CMS 1, free range on Haiku Pro. We went through and broke down how to capture flags and what the flags are, really lowering the bar to the CTF. I also want to point out, even though CTFs are typically competitive, I mean, I'm here with 77 other people right now, all trying to work through it. Ali, Leonardo, Jenny... Um, offering options, suggestions. I didn't feel like they were spoiling anything for me or ruining any experience. It very, it very much became a community thing where we were trying to do it uh, together. And I know many of you were also playing along, trying to compete and learn. So I hope you got value. I hope you feel less intimidated by CTFs now. Uh, I hope you can realize not just like the actual technical execution of completing the ctf and like goals and flags and ls's and, and shells and stuff like that but actually like learning like so web shell right i know what a web shell is i've seen them before i've never used one or written one um so you know when i saw that text file from search Blade, i'm like oh okay like where do i get a web shell leonardo told me to google one and then he wrote one in chat right so it, w it was super smooth super clean we did run into a little bit of a challenge um at the end but again we could spin it up and get right back to that challenge with the full you know say 50 minutes on the range and kind of grind through it so it's not it's not the end i i invite you to give it a shot yourself i i, I will play it and figure it out all right thanks leonardo guys let me know what you think so robert burke 
says, from a complete noob here, you lowered the bar considerably. I now do feel less intimidated and can make it past step one. So thank you very much. Good. Yeah, absolutely. They're fun. They are fun. I will tell you from experience, and it, it, this might be personality driven, but like I typically avoid CTFs at conferences, not because I don't like them or I feel intimidated, but they are incredibly consuming. If I do a CTF at a conference, I don't go to any talks. I don't really talk to anyone except other people doing the CTF. It becomes my entire focus. Um, virtual conferences the last couple years, I've done a couple CTFs, but then I end up like skipping dinner, not putting my kids to bed, getting up early, like like being grouchy about like having to take the dogs out. Like, like I get hyper consumed by them. So, you know, a word of caution, <laughs> a word of caution. Hey, I and D, Perusa, it's good to see you. Oh, Laura Flores, I'm glad you learned. That's that's why I do it. I don't do it for any other reason than to share knowledge and help people. I'll also let you know that a lot of times traditional CTFs will be like, like, oh, here's like here's a you know binary, like reverse it and find the flag. You know, it, it it's not it's not always common to have like multiple flags on the same target, but they do it that way here um, in Haiku. Jenny's saying, that's why I want the Simply CyberCon CTF to be fun and welcoming. Absolutely, Jenny. Absolutely. I'm super pumped about Simply CyberCon. More information on that. Here's the screenshot. All right, hold on. Let me check Discord out. <clears throat> I'll pull it up on chat. Where is it? Can you tag me in? Oh, live stream chat there. Thank you, Leonard. You did tag me, of course. Uh, let's open it in the browser. Okay, hold on. This doesn't ruin. This doesn't ruin anything for anyone. So you can see here, um, <clears throat> Leonardo has created the flag as he's he's put an arrow here already, and he's listening on. Um, localhost 8080 right and he's seeing he's seeing like basically um the commands in, effectively in the logs and here he is doing what we were trying to do right running it um and then using command whatever to pass an argument and you can see ls it's just basically list the files in a directory and it returned it to the screen right so these are the files in that um local directory to wherever this PHP server uh, is sitting in. So very cool. Thank you, Leonardo, for kind of tying that all together for us. Very nice. All right, guys, we went a couple minutes over, but um, I wish you the very best. I hope you got value. Hit the like button. That's always a, a nice way to kind of end the stream. But uh, be good, guys. This music's a little too a little too low for me to go out on. What is this? Is this good? No. Come on. There we go. This one's a little jazzy. All right, guys. Be good. Uh, tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Eastern time for the Daily Cyber Threat Briefing. My show where I do um, a, a live cyber threat intelligence briefing with you uh, live on stream, hundreds of people. We hit a new record today, 272 people in the community live stream, which was super awesome. Um, we're going to keep doing that. We're going to keep showing up. We're going to keep putting the work in. Um, tomorrow will be the final 10 a.m. briefing. I've been doing an 8 a.m., 10 a.m. Um, ever since I started teaching Actually, I was teaching before the stream started. So anyways, I'm switching my teaching schedule next semester for the Simply Cyber community. So it can be 8 a.m. every day, easy for everybody. Patrick Vance, today was your first CTF or your first uh, daily threat briefing? Yes, Justin Gold, tomorrow's the last 10 a.m. Uh, stream. Yep. Take care, Alicia Jerry. Good to see you. Very nice, Terry Moorhead. Love it. Gil. 
Gail, is that emo giving the middle finger? What is that doing? Is that a middle finger? What is that? Why would you? Why would you? Does that have a name? What is it? I don't get it. I'll just uh, assume it was a uh, misunderstanding. Oh, it's a thumbs up. I thought it was something. I thought it was a <laughs> thumbs up is nice. And actually, you know what? I was thinking like, why would YouTube have this as a default emote? Like this is a little brash. Is this how you compete with TikTok? Like, oh, we're, we're jumping the shark here. Thanks, Gil. All right, y'all. Thank you all very much. Uh, my name's Jerry. This has been Simply Cyber. We've been playing Haiku Pro. Busting down the myths of why CTFs are intimidating. I hope you had a good time. I'm going to go meet an electrician to talk about the the, uh, the mainframe, the working title of the shed. Be good, everybody. And until next time, stay secure.